Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie sound tutorial on wind noise. This is the effect you get when you walk to an exposed area, especially one that's high up. You get this sort of buffeting sound effect. Microphones pick up on air movement and they can't really tell the difference between air that's moving because of the wind and air that's coming out of your mouth. So they'll respond to it and record it and sometimes it peaks and you get this sort of like sound effect. Sound designers and recorders go to all sorts of lengths to reduce wind noise, fluffy socks and things like that. But if you hear wind noise when you're higher up or in an exposed place, then it actually helps to create a sense of space and scale. Making this sound is really easy. You just need to put a mic close to your mouth, not too close, maybe just 10 centimeters away. And you want to just blow a little left and right, up and down across the surface of the mic. Sort of like this. What you don't want is for it to peak. You don't want to get a clipped sound. So we're not going All we want to do is to have a nice wafting sort of sound going across the mic. Let's make a few of these so we can use a random node in our sound cue to mix it up a little bit when we're in game. Once you've made your recordings, either on your phone or with a mic, drag them into Audacity and we're going to trim and format them. I've made another video that you can have a look at on preparing audio files for Unreal Engine, so you can check that out as well. Make sure you export each of the, the wind noises as a separate file, and you want to make sure that they're also going out in WAV format, 44.1 kilohertz. 16 bit. Once you've done that, drag those files into UE4 and now we'll look at setting up the wind noise blueprint. If we have a look at the examples I've got over here, this is the, the Infinity Blade grasslands map from Epic with all their assets in. And what I've done at the edge of the balcony here, the edge of this walkway, and on this side as well, and over here the edges of this circular part, I've placed some collision boxes. This is the blueprint basically that we're about to make in a moment. And within this blueprint, we have a collision box that the player can enter to trigger the sound. And when they leave, it fades the sound out. So what I want to do when I look at the sound cue, I want to make the sound cue play a sound as soon as a player enters the box. But then after that, I want the sound to appear at random intervals in a constant loop. So it's going to constantly cycle through the sounds that we've got here in a random way. It's going to modulate them. So modulation is really just changes in pitch. Higher pitches give us a, a squeakier sound. Lower pitches give us a more bassy sound. And I just want to change the volume a little bit as well, just so we've got some variation in there. You can see if you have a look at the pitch min and max, I'm not changing it massively but I'm changing enough so that when those sounds, we only have four, when those sounds cycle through, hopefully they're not gonna be as easily recognizable by the player. Got my delay settings here. So every half second or between half a second and one and three quarter seconds, I'm going to have that random wind noise selected to play. And the loop means that everything to the left of that node is gonna be looped. And we can set a certain number of counts if we want that, but for here, I'm gonna just have it looping indefinitely. The concatenator is basically everything to the left of the concatenator is going to play the first pin first, and then it's going to play its second pin. So because the first pin is not on a loop, the first pin is going to play. And then after that, we're going to get this constantly looping second pin, which will just go through. So if you double click on the output, you'll see what I mean. Once you've created your sound cue, set it up like this, the next step is to pull that into, click and drag to pull that into your blueprint. So we want to create a new blueprint class and we're gonna create an actor blueprint. So I'm gonna call this one Wind Distortion 2. And in here, I'm gonna add component and add a box collision and then pick that up, drag and drop it into the scene that goes in there. 
Next, I'm going to scroll down here on the right. I'm going to untick auto activate. If we leave that ticked, it means that no matter where the player is, it's going to play the sound. So we want to untick that because what we want to do is set this up so that the sound only plays when the character enters the collision box. So now, remove those, select the collision box in your component section up there on the upper left, right click, make sure context sensitive is ticked, add event for box and we want to add on component begin overlap. From other actor, we're going to pull out, press equals twice, gets equal object. From there, we're going to pull out in the second pane to character. Then we're going to have a branch. And if that's true, we want to fade in our sound. I'm going to set my fade in time to say one second. Fade in volume level is one because we want the sound to fade in fully and we can leave the start time. We also want to trigger a fade out when the player leaves the box. So if we select the box again and add on component end overlap and from other actor again equal sign plug in your get player character to the second pin branch if true we want to fade out and again we'll have the fade out duration has been one second long so compile that and save. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to choose a new area and I'm going to place that in the scene. So here we've got a little balcony. It's a little bit exposed. So perhaps there would also be some wind noise here if we were standing right on the edge. So if we go back to our blueprint, hit browse, we'll take us straight to it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in the world. And what I haven't done, as you'll notice, is I haven't set the size of the collision box within the, bl the blueprint. What I can do is scale it up here. And that means that when the player moves into it, and that means it's a little bit easier to match the size of the collision box with the part of the scene we're wanting to apply it to. Raise it up a little bit. Hit spacebar to get the scale option. I'm just going to scale it up like this. Take a copy. Move that over here. There we are. So we have those two selected there. You can see that we've got the space here for the player to move into where they'll trigger that box. Now if we press play, test that out. Yep, you can hear it there. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found that useful. Take care and enjoy making your own projects. Thank you.